Attention all passengers, on this episode of the Xbox Passport, we're celebrating our plus ones and talking all about co-op gaming with Brittany Brombacher. Buckle your seatbelts, we're about to take off. travelers to the xbox passport podcast presented by xbox canada the podcast all about the best value in gaming xbox game pass i'm steve sailor and joining me on this voyage is the one the only my co-pilot and co-passenger i don't know it, hey it's your my friend and yours for girls like games podcast leah jewer hi leah how are you hello steve <laughs> uh apologies in advance gibson yeah. is in the room he is barking it is not something I can control, so like he's part of the show now, and he's an honorary <laughs> Xbox influencer now. Oh yeah, okay, we got to talk about that in a minute. But before we get into yeah. to, to all that, uh, I definitely wanted to be able to to introduce our, our very special guest today um, from the 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 absolute amazing, the wonderful, the person who scared me half to death and almost made me have a heart attack. From What's Good Games podcast, Brittany Brombacher. Hi, Brittany. It builds character, Steve. That's what you I'm say that all you. the time, but it really doesn't. It just makes me more into a scaredy cat about scary games. You know, listen, I played Resident Evil when I was eight years old, Steve, and I was scared. I had nightmares for years. And now yeah, okay, so you built up a tolerance. I've only been doing this for a few years now. You have so much life ahead of you, Steve. I don't want to hear excuses. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but we also do have a bit of housekeeping. So, but by the way, just to let you know, we've been kind of taking a little bit of a break. Uh, the summer, you know, is upon us. We want to be able to celebrate with our families and, you know, just get out in the sun, even though the sun just wants to kill us right now. Uh, but, you know, what? we're just enjoying our, our, our kind of our summer break. So we're basically doing this episode, and we got one more episode for the uh, – for the summer and then uh we'll basically uh we'll, that'll be for the end of august uh and also hey you know what go check out some of the other episodes we've done we did like i know it's been a while but you know we can go check out the the, uh, the stuff about we talked about redfall with paris lily uh, we have an episode with naomi kyle we did all we did all the breakdown of everything that i saw and got to play at summer game fest all that stuff you can go check it out on the podcast feed or on youtube.com slash at steve sailor which is uh, my channel um but for this episode we wanted to celebrate our plus ones uh so here's to basically our friends and family who love playing co-op games with us be it collaborative or competitive sitting on the couch together or convening over xbox party chat at a distance gaming can bring people together and that's why we have uh, our, our dear friend Brittany with us today we're going to talk about some amazing co-op games but before we get into all that, Leah, why is Gibson in, an Xbox influencer, and, <laughs> and, and 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 why can I see? Why, apparently, you get like she got like he got like a whole bunch of like cool stuff from Xbox. Yeah. So like uh, two or th two weeks ago, I think it was. Yeah, I got a phone call. One was at work of somebody wanting to deliver a package to the house, and the complex that I'm in, it's quite confusing. It's <laughs> I not find well that's labeled. weird with Xbox. They like they drop off yeah. packages like they're se like they're secret agents oh, and be like, like you got to be agents. here in ten minutes. A black box. cars showing up yeah it's, it's Wait, really like, yeah it's that kinda... literally happened today so yeah, i got the, so i got from so xbox canada has like a, a special deal with the toronto blue jays where they uh -huh. they printed off like custom uh xbox xbox jerseys oh, that's baseball cool. jerseys and then it's wow. like they got like our names on the back i literally got a call this morning of like we got a driver. He's getting a black car. He's going to be coming up to your uh, elevator or to, to your lobby. Meet him in the lobby in 10 minutes. <laughs> and I just, I felt like it was like a, the, like a package drop, like a secret agent package drop off. That's it hilarious. Weird. <laughs> I wonder if it's a, if, if it's a, our neighbors, a neighbors up in the North, a Canada thing, if you will. Cause they, uh, we don't get any special black boxes. We just get regular <laughs> old cardboard boxes. Jeff Rubin saying, what are you doing? <laughs> Jeff. I, we get Jeff. black boxes. They are still cardboard, but there are yes. black boxes. Uh, see, so. <laughs> I want a black cardboard box. That's way fancier. That's all I'm Saying. Yeah. Okay, sorry, Leah. Didn't mean to like die. You know, no, it's to totally fine. I mean, <laughs> I'm emailing us. It happened the same thing uh, for me today too. My jersey's out front, but uh, yeah, no. Like two weeks ago, I got this phone call, and this lady was like, um, "Yeah, uh, I have a package to deliver for from Xbox for the dog Gibson." <laughs> and I was like, oh, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Okay." Now, mind you, Gibson, we got I Gibson. Uh, became part of our family while this podcast has kind of been going on. And the mm -hmm. last episode recorded, he, he essentially was like just tiny, like 
four month old puppy to sleeping under the the desk while we were doing the show. So I had apologized on that podcast too. And uh, lo and behold, they sent him a package that came with a bunch of treats and toys and uh, two Aww. Yeti labeled Gibson uh, oh, bowls for that's him. Amazing. So he, he is now an honorary Xbox gamer and oh uh, will be green for life. And uh, yeah, lo- love it. And so, I mean, green so for life until, you know, another company decides to try to buy Gibson's love, uh, exactly. which no, is I don't potentially going to happen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, special thanks to the to the folks at uh, at Xbox Canada. They sent me a a beautiful little note with it. Congratulations on your new best friend. Here's a gift for your furry new arrival, Gibson. Yours Aww. in gaming, Xbox Canada. So yeah, I thought that was super sweet. So yeah, he's now an Xbox gamer, and uh, yeah, he's part of the show, and he's probably <laughs> going to bark today. So <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah, that's, that's what they do. That's we can't fine, control yeah. it, but you know that's part of the fun, right? And that's one thing that I always love. And I've been spending lots of time, obviously, playing tons of games and being able to sit on the couch. And he's like my co-op gamer now, right? Like he lies down on my lap while I'm trying to play. And and it's always a lot of fun. Yeah. So, Britt, we wanted to, you know, get to know you a little bit. For those who may not know um, who you are and what you do, can you tell us, this, you know, the, 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 you know, the usual spiel of who is Brittany Brombacher? Who, who am I? I try to ask myself that every single day, Steve. Um, <laughs> Wow, yeah, so I got my start in the video game industry, gosh, in 2009, I started my own personal blog, wasn't affiliated with anyone, really. Um, no, that's not true, actually. 2009, like, this is, my mind is rusty, this, we're going way back now. I started blogging on IGN's community blog back in the day, um, and then through that, I met a community of amazing, fun folks who also played video games, and then that ultimately led, that inspired me to start my own website in 2011, and then I did that from 2011 to 2017, and then in 2017, uh, of co-founded What's Good Games, which is a weekly video game podcast. And that's kind of like my industry history in a nutshell, if you will. But, um, you know, I've been just doing fun stuff in the industry for, gosh, forever now. Like I said, you know, covering events, talking about games that I love, being maybe some may say a little overly passionate about my loves about Dragon Age and Baldur's Gate and the Yakuza and Resident Evil games. If I love something, I love it with so much passion. And people are like, oh, my God, you're so loud. It's like, I just love stuff. Be nice. <laughs> um, but no, I just try to have fun. You know, I, I that's what life is all about. I just like to have fun in this industry and just kind of do stuff that brings me joy and happiness so that's yeah. like why i'm here with you guys today yeah i will say like the first time i met uh for those let's say the first time i met brit was uh uh like we because i think we because we never actually like it was it pax i think it was pax east was that the first time we ever actually like talked and actually met uh, was when we were on, like when when you when when Andrea invited me to be on your panel, which I had like no like that was oh, so yeah that was so weird and like, the random. Did I ever tell you that story of how that happened? I don't think so. So I was uh, so I was going to be in like in San Francisco and I was uh, for I think it was for like a conference or whatever, and I was going to be um, in like I was I was I was going to do kind of funny uh, for Games Daily, uh, and then I was going to do a few things, but I reached out uh, to Andrea. And because uh, I like I knew that at the time, this is when she was still living there. I was like, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? If you ever need a guest for like uh, what's good games, so, uh, I'm going to be in town. I'd love to be able to have that happen. She said we they couldn't she couldn't make it happen because you guys were coming into town for like some Patreon stuff. So it was like uh, like I totally understood that. And then she and then she goes, well, uh, we're going like, are you going to be at PAX East? We would love to have you as a panelist on uh, for like PAX East. And I was like. Uh, hold on. And I yeah. had no, pl- this is like three weeks before PAX. I had no plans whatsoever to go to PAX at oh, all. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was just like, huh. I, I looked it up. I, I was like, okay, I found a hotel room somewhere and I was about to, like, and I applied for a media pass, but I got denied. And then I, I was like, okay, well, obviously I, like, I can't get it now because everything's sold out, whatever. So I emailed Andrea and I was like, okay, well, thanks. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, or, I, or I appreciate the offer. Unfortunately, I can't be able to make it. That kind of thing. And Andrea's like, you know, as she is, basically like, give me a minute. And within like an hour, she says, I got you a media pass. You're all good to go. And uh, I was like, we'll see. We'll see what uh, at PAX and our, and our panel. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, okay. that's, I don't think I knew that story. That's awesome. No? Yeah. yeah. I remember so, that. God, what year was that again? Uh, 2019. Wow. Yeah. I feel like I've known you so much longer than that, though. Huh. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, 
probably started really like getting like deep like into the content creation stuff for video game stuff like since like twenty like eighteen something like that. So um, I'm 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 a I'm a baby in this industry. <laughs> oh, we're all babies. You're crushing it, Steve. I tell you this all the time. You're doing such good Aww, work. So here's me hey. singing your praises again. That's the Aww. Well, Brittany, we do always like to be able to ask uh, as well on this podcast an icebreaker question, and I got oh one that I think that this one this one might be a tough one to answer. I'll Ooh. just say this. Okay. So here we go. If you had to choose which gaming franchise to play for the rest of your life, you know, Desert Island franchise type thing, and you can only choose one of these two, what would it be? Yakuza or Resident Evil? F I knew it. I told you. Here's <laughs> okay, so before we even started recording, friends, those who are listening, Steve was like, oh, yeah, I got a good icebreaker question I'm going to ask you. I'm like, well, something about Resident Evil or something about Yakuza, isn't it? He's like, I'm not telling. And sure, sh <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, this is so terrible. Okay, I can't. Oh, my God. This is awful. Why would you do this to me? Okay. I would have to pick probably... Okay, Desert Island situation. I'm going to have to go with the Yakuza games for one fact. Okay. This is okay. the thing that's going to push it over the edge. And the reason being is that those games are really long. Really long games. Oh, that's my, okay. That's, okay. That's, my, that's my reason. As much as I was a love to play the Resident Evil series for the rest of my life, I'm thinking how cuckoo bananas like that lore is getting in mm -hmm. Resident Evil. Um, you know, those are t typically shorter experience. And I feel like in Yakuza, you know, you have all the arcades. So essentially, in the Sega arcades in the games, you get all of those games within a game. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, true, true. So yeah, get all okay. the, yeah, so big brain moment here. I'm trying to think outside the box. So, yeah, okay. I think I'd have to go that way. And plus, I have to, yeah, I think that's the way I'd have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Okay, that makes wow. sense. Hey, you know what? It's smart. It's like I'm you go flustered. with the, so the thing that's going to wait, like the waste amount of time until you get rescued, and then you can go and you can play Resident Evil once you get rescued. So thank that, you. That, well, that's only if you play it with me, because I know you know. By then, <sighs> I'm hoping you would have you know beefed up. You had to bring room. it up. You had to bring it up. <laughs> 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 uh, for those that don't know, check out my YouTube channel. The oh, Brittany man. scared me half to death trying to play the Maiden Resident Evil demo. So good. <sighs> Oh, it's my favorite things to do. I do the same thing with Andrea when they play scary games. I'm like, just check that out. What could go wrong? Knowing that there's a jump scare. It's the best. Oh, yeah, true. But then the you tr also trick people and basically telling people to run like and, and freaking out. And then yeah, there's nothing to run from. And I'm I not don't. freaking out having a heart attack. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, friend. I don't I don't remember anything like that whatsoever. <clears throat> I always knew, Brittany, you'd be the death of me in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's I'll, I'll take that answer. You could. A, it's a good answer. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Anything. So, um, all right. So let's jump into kind of what we are playing. Um, so, uh, uh, well, actually, you know what, Brittany, we'll start off with you. What if, like, what are the games you're currently playing? Doesn't have to be Xbox. Doesn't have to be specifically Game Pass related. Um, yeah. What are you currently playing right now? I just wrapped up Diablo 4's campaign. Finally, nice. I finally wrapped that up, and I just created a new character and hopped into the first season of content. So that's what I've been hanging out with and doing. Um, you know, I'm I'm curious to see how long the end game. Have you guys finished Diablo yet? I haven't yet. I'm about think halfway through the campaign still. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so you know, I'm gonna be curious to see like how much of the end game grind can how long it can hold my attention because now it feels like it's just mostly about in, in the internal eternal realm, right? Mm -hmm. About um, can it hold my interest? Interest and is it just gonna be about getting better gear? And if so, like that's fine. You know, that's fun and it has its place. But I've never really played a game before where I've had a battle pass, so I'm like kind of oddly excited about that. You know, like a true game as a service. So yeah. um, I I'm excited to unlock the battle pass stuff. You know, and it's some of the stuff you have to do to unlock. It's like oh. Open t like clear ten sellers or like do this to an item. Little simple things, but you get that dopamine hit when you do it. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of diving into that, and I'm going to see how long you know I can I can be entertained by that because, as you may or may not not know, Baldur's Gate three is coming out very soon. True, true. And then my life is going to be dedicated to that. So I'm just trying not to start anything new. So I would gotcha. say like that's my most recent shenanigans is Diablo four. So what build did you have uh, in the campaign, and what are you uh, oh, doing Oh, Barbarian. This always, always. So yeah. I have a Barbarian, right, in, in the campaign, and then I started a Barbarian for season for the season content. But I promised myself I cannot use any of the same skills that I used in the campaign that I'm using uh, this time around in the seasonal content. So that's actually been really fun because that was something that the team was, you know, praising about their work, right? It's like, you, you know, you can have one class but have so many different characters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course that sounds good on paper, but, like, 
like when you actually get into it, it's like, obviously, I mean, that skill tree is pretty impressive for each class. And then I'm starting to build a character and learning how to use certain move sets that I typically wouldn't use. You mm -hmm. know, in my in my campaign character, I love to have my shouts and my whirlwind and that sort of those sort of attacks and buffs, but I can't use any of them in the seasonal character because like that's the rule I set for myself. So I'm going outside the box and this build is really fun that I'm using. So nice. um, yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm currently rocking a, a sorcerer right now, but with like okay. a, a, a like a electric build, um, oh. which has been so. Oh, it's actually been kind of fun. Like I was gonna do like a like a like a frost build, um, mm -hmm. but it was like, oh, you know what? I just really I just want to go like like full on a Palpatine on uh, people's asses. Like it just like electrocute them because it just works. Yeah. <laughs> that's frost mine. Is really frost. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. It's a frost build sorcerer. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm working through right now, and I love it. Do you have the the ultimate where the frost just like comes out from you and you're, you turn into a little like ice crystal? And I don't know what it's called. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to remember which one that is, but it's like a kind of like a shield but at the same yeah, time. You yeah, freeze yeah, everybody yeah. and slow them all down. Yeah, yeah, I love that. that's yeah. a cool move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My move right now is the, the I got the one my first I unlocked my first ultimate and it's basically it's just like you just like send an electrical wave and That's then awesome. it just it just bounces between different enemies like all the different arcs oh, yeah. and it just oh. and it does that for like a good solid like thirty seconds and I'm like yes oh That's so this, cool this so well whenever all of a sudden there's like four giant like bat like like baddies basically just coming at you at the same time and it's oh it's it's awesome um cool well actually yeah. i was gonna say like that is definitely something diablo 4 is something i've I, i've been playing uh quite a bit as well um but uh so you said you've, you've been playing final fantasy 16 and you said dredge as well yeah yeah i just finished a, a little game called dredge and i've had i had a really i think it's called black sail games oh, i should check that is the ones who um develop it but yeah it's this really cute management sim slash kind of has a sinister twist to it and you start out have any of you played dredge Sure no, I'm it's like no, on my I, I'm, list. I'm anxious to hear about it, yeah. I'm yeah. so excited to try it Okay, out. so yeah. I love Management Sims. I love Story of Seasons and like those sorts of games. And I've been having the itch for something like that. So Dredge looked really appealing to me because... You know, you have you're a fisherman and you are in this boat and it's like not that fancy of a boat, not that great of a boat, but you catch fish and then you sell your fish for money and then you um, dredge up materials and crafting materials and then you upgrade your boat even more and then you can go out farther and you can catch different kinds of fish. Um, and there's the map is this big, uh, it's like a you know it's a big like map, it's like, it's, duh, it's like a big square and there's all these different islands on it and um, each island usually has something there, whether it's like a survivor or maybe it's materials or it's something that adds to the mystery of this world because while it sounds cozy and cute um there's this interesting day or night cycle and it kind of plays again with the with the survivors you find into this little sinister dark twist which is um if you're out too late at night you have this eye that appears above the uh, at the top of the screen right and then it, the eye color changes as you're out later and later and essentially i think it's supposed to represent your character possibly having a panic attack or possibly um hallucinating because if you're out too late you know rocks will manifest in front of you and your boat can hit it and then you can damage your boat and then you have to go back and repair if you have anything in your inventory while the boat gets hit it's a it's a random roll but you might lose that item if you hit something or crash into it oh. um you know you might see dark shadowy boats ahead of you you might hear weird things uh so there is that that definite kind of dark stressful twist to it but they just released an update where you can turn on what's called passive mode and it makes it so the sea creatures because there are big ass creatures in the water that will attack you it'll make it so the creatures won't attack you you still have the the hallucinations um, if you're out too late, but and you still have to repair your boat, but you won't you don't have to worry about being attacked. So I turned that shit on instantly. I was like, I just want something cozy and relaxing, and despite it being kind of like twisted, um, there's a really interesting story there. And if you turn on passive mode, it's a more relaxing experience where you can just kind of focus in on the inventory management and the upgrading, and collecting notes and lore throughout the seas and finding out what this world is that you're in and mm. i really enjoyed it yeah i had a lot of fun with it nice it has like a similar uh it seems like it's a similar vibe to like dave the diver almost uh, that everyone seems to be obsessed with lately oh, yeah i heard about that yeah. <laughs> management oh, sims and fishing is like it's genius thing. right yeah i love it and they like they're my favorite types of games to play and oh, yeah. I, when i heard about this one it just i don't know there was other stuff going on at the time that we were reviewing and i was like oh i need time to play that so it's like on my list and i know in between like august and september is kind of like the opportunity oh. to really pick up anything extra so it might be my game for august yeah and it's not too long of a game you know you can kind of just 
blast through it if you want. But uh, yeah, I like there's 125 different species of fish, I feel like. So there's so much. You have crab pots. You have nets. There's just so much. And the characters are all so... Um, the, the, it's all a really cool art style too, but um, the, the, the writing is just so, so good in it. Uh, and it's you really do unravel this mystery, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I love that. All right, Leah, what, what have you been uh, playing lately? Diablo 4 still going on there. Tears of the Kingdom still making my way through. Um, Same. I, speaking of, of management sims and farming sims and all kind of stuff, I downloaded through Game Pass Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. Oh. I'm not going to lie. I didn't get very far in it. I kind of started and like wasn't feeling the art vibe, was kind of feeling mm. it was really starting extremely slow. I know it's reviewed super well. Um, especially on Steam, it has like a nine out of 10 or something like that. But there was just something about it. Like it just wasn't grabbing me. And considering I had all these other games, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put it down. And yeah. maybe at some point I'll come back to it. Especially since they're like the group that created the farming sim. Cause I know that they started the, the, the harvest moon games and all that jazz. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if I come back to it. That's the thing I like about game pass though. Right. It's like, I don't feel like I've burned myself by downloading and taste testing a game, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the one that I'm kind of obsessed with right now is Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. What? <laughs> so amazing. Here's the thing. Uh, when we started playing this, because I, I play simulation games with my husband, um, he and uh, well, he knows lots about cars. I know nothing and did not realize that I knew nothing <laughs> until they said, um, fix this carburetor piece and this spark plug and this fuse box. And I'm like, What's what? A spark plug? Are these <laughs> you know, and where do they where do they live in the car? Like, I, I don't know. Uh, in fact, so, I think it's like that proves right there. It's like, where do they live in a car? As yeah, if it's like an, like exactly. an object. Where's their home? <laughs> <laughs> Where are they supposed to be? So, um, yeah, I'm getting an education at the same time as Smart. I'm playing this game. And now I feel like the next time I have to go and, like, get maintenance done on my car, I'm not going to, like, feel like they're pulling the wool over my eyes. Because <laughs> I'm actually going to know what they're talking about. <laughs> that's all you know that's interesting because i know nothing about cars either and i'm like that might be a good way to learn something yeah yeah, yeah. so huh. uh we'll uh we'll we'll see how how much further i get but now like i started going down the rabbit hole of like all right how do i min max this thing and uh <laughs> and, and seeing youtube videos and tips and like all this kind of stuff and i because like yeah there are points where i was just like stuck because i just didn't know what they were talking about or the piece of the car so i was like i have to look this up because i don't know so oh so, you're yeah, gonna be you're gonna be so fun. primed for forza motorsport when that comes out in the fall like it's gonna oh, yeah. be like you're gonna be like i know exactly how to tune this car to be able to work <laughs> doesn't mean i can virtually drive cars either but like at least i'll know how to build them <laughs> fair enough fair enough I I love yeah, that. so that's uh, that's what I'm in the thick of right now. Cool. How about you, awesome. Steve? Uh, so yeah, definitely like like we said, Diablo Four, playing that, and then I uh, I actually just finished uh, for review. Um, you can be able to check it out on my uh, my YouTube channel. I did a review of Disney's Illusion Island. Ooh. Uh, and it is, let me tell you, if you are into Metroidvanias or if you want to introduce either maybe your kids or to someone who's never played a Metroidvania before. This is the game to introduce them to. It uh -huh. has all the elements of a Metroidvania, but a ton of like assists and stuff that helps uh, the like anyone who is new to get like is maybe intimidated by them, but basically to jump in. I've been saying it. It's like a kid's first Metroidvania. Uh, and it's and it, with like all the wacky characters from like Mickey, Minnie, uh, Donald and Goofy. Uh, it's got all the voice cast. And it's just it, it's just a fun time it's on the nintendo switch uh and i, I definitely it's uh it'll be out it's out now as of the as of this podcast goes out but uh i would definitely recommend picking up i and especially for accessibility too there's a ton of assists in there that can help out like you can set like your own difficulty of the, how many hearts you get you get as your character mm -hmm. um so you can mm -hmm. set from one to three hearts but then you can also set a stone heart where basically you just you just don't die you have an infinite amount of lives uh and you can like you can in set them independently so if, say if you're playing with your kid and you want to be able to like okay they can be able to play on a stone heart you can set a challenge for yourself and basically just give yourself one heart and then you're like now it's a challenge for you while your kid is basically 
to just having fun. So it's like, and it's fully customizable. It doesn't change anything about the gameplay. It just is just how many lives you have left. Uh, and That's it's awesome. It's uh, absolutely amazing, and there's like a ton of stuff to do. I'm I'm still I'm about like maybe about seventy five percent of the way through it. It's it's not that long. It's about maybe I'd say eight to maybe eleven hours long. Uh, and there's a ton of collectibles to be able to get that has a ton of lore from uh, from Dis like Disney's past to all, like going back as far as like Steamboat Willie, uh, Mickey's yes. first appearance. Like there's a there's a ton of stuff in there, and I I highly recommend it. It's just a fun, charming little game. It's great. I remember I played that at Summer Game Fest, and mm -hmm. I loved it because I think you can hug your characters, mm -hmm. right, in order to like replenish a heart. I was like, this is so <gasps> wholesome, it's so yep. cute. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's great. Like if you're playing, like I played it solo, like at home, but I did play co-op uh, co at Summer Game Fest uh, mm -hmm. with with the devs, and it was, and they showed me that. I was like, that is just a cool. I, mechanic, I love that, uh, and then also as well, like if you are a little bit better at platforming, and and say the person you're playing with is not, uh, you can basically like you can jump up ahead, and you can actually lower down a rope that will help. The, like basically, the, the other player can climb up, and they can skip past Amazing. that sort of platforming challenge for them. So uh, it's really, really great. And I, 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 yeah, it's if you if you love Disney, you're if you're a Disney adult, or you just love Disney games in general. This is a, a, a definite one of those like absolute charming games that I, I highly recommend picking what up. What a perfect sure. pairing. You know, a game know. like that and Disney. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's genius. And I just love that. Uh, how do you say they're Dulala? Is that how you say this? I think Dulala is what I've been Dulala. saying. It, yeah. 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 Um, I love that they made this game and it's very clear what their intentions were. They weren't trying to make a hard, complicated Metroidvania. You know, they had a vision and they leaned into it and they pulled it off. And I, you know, usually I like a little bit of challenge in my games, but even sure. this, like, no, I don't need it in this. You know, yeah. the music I remember at Summer Game Fest was so good and it was oh. so charming and relaxing. And yep. you could just kind of vibe out while you played it and so that's awesome i'm glad it's yeah. reviewing well i need to play it yeah and there's it, there's also like a good story too as well it's funny like they got full and they have full-on animations like like they get like it like it's yeah. a whole animated cinematics uh in this as well and it just like it's seeing like kind of a classic sort of old style of animation but like with a modern sort of twist to it it's just yeah. oh, disney man disney. <laughs> Such a good for games anyway. Well, you know, we'll, we won't talk about the strike stuff. Uh, anywho, <laughs> uh, that's basically what I've been playing. But it's, so speaking of co-op games, obviously this episode is themed. It's it's dedicated to here's to our plus ones. And we wanted to sort of curate a list of uh, games that are on Game Pass right now that you can be able to play uh, co-op uh, together with either your friends and family, like either in couch co-op or online or just m playing multiplayer in general. So. Uh, the three of us, we've kind of gathered a, a, a list of games uh, into into so that hopefully we, you know it's a playlist that you will definitely want to be able to check out. Uh, and uh, we've got we got an extensive list. So first off, uh, Leah, why don't you talk to us about Among Us? Yeah, Among <laughs> let's us. start off with I mean, chaotic, chaos. If you're gonna already. if you're gonna go co-op, you might as well go straight straight for the jugular and chaos right when it comes to co-op and among us is just a, such a phenomenal game and really had a moment a few years ago too where i felt like that's all anybody was doing was yeah. among us <laughs> and just trying to figure out who was sus right so concept <laughs> of the game is someone's a killer everybody else isn't and you got to try and figure out who it is and you're all alone on this spaceship um, and it just kind of brings to the forefront that like good game mechanics and a good premise doesn't necessarily mean you need the top of the line graphics or anything. And as long as you can bring the people together and play something that everyone's, you know, having a good laugh at, you, you've got something solid, right? So Preach like, it. um, it's, it's ev like, it's on absolutely everything. <laughs> I can think of mm -hmm. and and yeah it's in game pass and uh highly recommend that game especially if you got a bunch of friends playing online and uh let the hilarity ensue because it's it's just it's just so much fun to uh accuse your friends that they're a murderer <laughs> yep <laughs> yep <laughs> And this was like the kind of like the perfect game too to be able to play uh, like uh, like just like uh, during the pandemic like I could not uh, believe like it just it hit like even though it was out for a couple of years like I think it was like what one or two years I think before um, and it just like w it then it got hit but like with a bunch of streamers trying to be able to just play it because uh, it was something to do over the pandemic and and it just blew the heck up and i yeah. absolutely uh, love it and and yeah you can be able to play it on pretty much every platform but uh, of course it's uh, 
on Game Pass. And there was something actually that came up uh, that I thought about just recently. I was listening to uh, mutual friends of the show, uh, the first, the Friends per Second podcast, uh, and uh, and Lucy James brought up, a, like mentioned Battlestar Galactica, and I thought at that time. I want, uh, I, and I want to see this happen. I don't know if developers, if you're watching this, like I would love to, like uh, Inner Sloth, if you're even watching this, I would love to see this happen. Imagine an Among Us type game, but with Battlestar Galactica. Ah. Like who's the, the imposter is a Cylon? You have to figure out who is the Cylon, right? I think like, you right. need to start pitching this, Steve. It writes yeah. itself. I, I, thought, I, I, I didn't. I can't believe I'm like. I would have thought of this. I should have thought of this years ago. But anyway, I, just, I don't know. I just thought it would be cool. Because we all know you own the rights to Battlestar Galactica, so that means yeah, you can sure. easily yeah, just of go course. start pitching. <laughs> Might as well. I mean, so who else is going to do anything with it? I mean, right? <laughs> um, but uh, Brittany, you, you played Among Us, or, uh, like a, 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 with a bunch of, uh, of uh, crazy, chaotic folks. I think, right? <laughs> I did a little bit during uh, the yeah the heart of the heart of the pandemic, whatever that even means. But when we we're all stuck at home, just doing live streams and whatnot, so I played a little bit of it, um, not too much of it. I remember it was pure chaotic, and I'm such a bad liar. Like I, you know, I, I really uh, if I and I, was, I didn't know what I was doing, and I was playing with a whole bunch of seasoned people, and so I would stab someone, and then someone would be like right there. I'm like, whoops, guess I can't lie my way out of this one. But it was a fun time. <laughs> I remember I played it for the first time, and it was like, it, of course, the first time I play ever is literally the first the, I get imposter right away and I'm like I know nothing about what to do and I I was like okay you know what? I'm just gonna play into this like I don't know what I'm doing so I'm just gonna like pretend as if I'm like I have no idea like I don't know what to do how do you kill somebody like what what is like what does that even like what do you do what do you do your task and I and I'm not gonna lie I actually won so oh. I don't know if that says anything about like my lying skills or just you know I'm just that trustworthy <laughs> Well, something someone ever goes missing off this podcast, everyone. You know who to question. Yep. Uh, no comment. Uh, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> there you are. Come on um, you. So, uh, Britt, you kind of uh, had a game that you've been uh, playing with uh, at co-op, uh, and we had like two games kind of like si- like that are similar to this, but uh, or another game is similar to this. But you uh, you talked about like humans fall flat. Yeah, 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 because I actually whittled my long list down to two, and that was one of the ones I really wanted to talk about, so I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Yeah, so Human Fall Flat, I don't think there's ever been a game that has made me laugh more than this oh, game. Okay. So this came out, have, are you familiar familiar with Human Fall Flat at all? I'm, hum- I'm familiar with it because one okay. of the uh, uh, games we also have on this list is Gang Beast, so like, it has okay. like kind of a similar yeah. vibe to it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so similar, yeah, with the, the wobbly uh, rag doll physics. So Human oh, Fall Flat came cool. out. Mm -hmm. In 2017, and they actually just recently announced Curve Digital um, that they have sold over 40 million copies across all of their platforms. So they're just absolutely crushing it. Um, And it's on crossplay. So if you want to play, you can play with all of your friends. I think it supports local co-op up to split screen. So two players and then online, I think it's like up to six, maybe even more. But yeah, it's just a really hilarious, like lighthearted physics game where your main characters are like these little dudes that look like they're made of dough um and it's all ragdoll physics and so and they're all wobbly and jiggly and whatnot and uh you have like these different and you have all these different costumes you can put on them i think when i played i was wearing a turkey suit the whole time and i think jason my husband was wearing like a dog suit but they're these like these little like human figures right and so there's all these different stages and each stage has a goal it's probably mostly just like go from point a to point b and then you can move on to the next stage but there's all these little puzzles you have to do in between. And it could be a, something as simple as push this, pull this, climb onto this. Because there's an actual control scheme to these little wobbly dough people. And it, it's just some of the funniest times I've ever had playing a co-op game with my husband. Because it is just absolutely ridiculous. And it's very forgiving in the sense that if you fall off a cliff, you're just going to spawn instantly. Like, they know this can be a weird game to wrap your head around when it comes to the controls. Um, but these little dudes can push, pull, climb, swing, uh, carry stuff. You can grab each other's hand i can't tell you how many times i threw my husband off the cliff because i just thought it would be funny um there's i mean this one- <laughs> yes you do of course <laughs> <laughs> of course that's why you do and they have these really cute like little juicy butts and they're just really adorable anyway so um there's this one like scene that i'll never forget because it got me and my husband and then it, we looked to the point where we cried laughing and then we played it on what's good games during a stream but you have this huge ravine and you there's this big like rope that you have to like swing on and you just have to it's hard to explain but the fact when you're trying to run and you're trying to jump and you're trying to grab this rope it 
any other game, I think it would be frustrating because it can be so it can be kind of hard to get your head, like I said earlier, around the controls. But it is just hilarious, and it always makes people who are like eh, not so sure about it. That's usually when they click with Human Fall Flat that I've seen, because yeah, you you're just trying to swing on this rope, and your little dude is just like jiggling in the wind, and then you have to like let go, and then maybe you you don't make the jump fully, then your co-op partner has to try to like reach their hand down and pull you up, and it is just absolutely ridiculous. And probably again, like I said, the game that's made me laugh the most, and it is just so fun and lighthearted and such a mood booster and I'm just glad that this game has done so incredibly well because it's just again one of those little things that works you know and it's just perfect for co-op I mean you can play by yourself too but if you have someone and you're looking for like a laugh you have some steam you need to blow off and if, I don't know if you drink alcohol but like we had a few shots and then we started playing and oh my god that actually sounds like a great idea, like taking a couple shots and just, you know, like just going in and chaos ensue. I love that. It is that. just pure chaos. And like I said, so forgiving. You're going to die so much, but you just instantly spawn again, and then you can just keep going. And there's different uh, puzzles you can try to do, different things you can try to get into and cause some chaos, like you said, and get into some trouble. It's just, it, it is what you want. And there's all these different stages, like there's a castle, an industrial zone, um, I think like a volcano area, uh, like a canyon. So it takes takes place in a bunch of different areas and it's uh it's just really it's a such a good time i love that yeah. cool yeah. well leah you've got one that, uh, on this list that i was kind of curious about uh called golf with your friends when, like oh. it, 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 it's one of your favorites you said yeah i've played this a lot um so it's essentially mini putt uh okay. and i play this most time with uh, my sister, her husband, and my husband. It, it seems to be the night after partying, and we've just eaten like a big old greasy breakfast. And we're kind of hungover, oh. and uh, it's the reason I like this game is it is very approachable for non gamers because my sister has only recently gotten into playing video games, uh, kind of more on the steady. I got her in. She's a huge Hogwarts uh, Legacy mm. fan because she's big in mm. Harry Potter. And uh, so we played this game. So she's not used to like analog sticks and all that kind of stuff, right? So she is able to easily play this because it, it uses one controller and you like pass it around, almost like you're passing around the putter. And ah. the concept is just, you know, just like mini putt where you have like really weird obstacles and stuff to get around. The sets are pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's just one that, you know, we just laugh at as we're playing because you know, it's pretty darn easy to mess up, especially with the obstacles making you like push the ball one way or roll them backwards on some sort of wheel or have really obnoxious uh, obstacles to get around because it's very difficult in some places and you just magically are able to do it because you ricocheted it off something else. Like, <laughs> yeah, I love this game. It's a lot of fun. Definitely a great one. Perfect couch co-op. And uh, and yeah, you only need one controller. So it makes it so easy to be able to just pass that around because oftentimes if you're playing a lot of multiplayer games, you know, we all have multiple controllers hanging around the house, but not everybody does, right? So right. here's the opportunity to play a game if you've really only got one controller at bay. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah. Lots that reminds of me of uh, back in the, like, uh, uh, in the old Nintendo days. I remember my, my mom got obsessed with the uh, NES version of Monopoly. And mm. like to the point where I actually think that she could still be a gamer today if she had not found that game, because that game is the only game she has basically been willing, w wanting to play ever since. <laughs> uh, and to the point where I've installed it on multiple computers that she's owned over the past like 20, uh, 20, 30 years because she just wants to keep playing it. And I remember we would have to pass the uh, the controller back and forth to whenever we want to play, because if because because if one of us ever accident like ever like hits a to whole roll that roll the dice when it's not their turn it oh, it's, oh. You, 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 you're gonna be disowned uh, in our family <laughs> um yeah my mom gets competitive with that too like she'll be like <laughs> i mean monopoly's no laughing joke you know no like know. there's one i've only been able to beat her one time and yet to this day she refuses to acknowledge that i actually did beat her she thinks she's completely undefeated and i'm just like okay <laughs> all right you, you think that way it's fine so you see that's when you just you say okay mama Love ya. Whatever yep. you say, dear. Whatever you say, mom. <laughs> yep, yep. You know, just try to keep peace in the household. That's, that's yep. basically it. <laughs> that's it. Um, so, uh, but speaking of keeping peace in the household, uh, it takes two. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. 
this has been one that it's like been, I actually have yet to be able to play because I've been wanting to be able to kind of play it, like find that like this is a game that I need to like play with either my partner or just like it, yeah. it's something I feel like this is kind of like a relationship type game. Um, like, have either of you played it? And what, what can you tell us a little, a little bit about it? Yeah, I played, I played it. it. Have you read? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah. You go ahead. Take it away. OK. I mean, it's been I feel like forever since I played it. Um, but the thing that about It Takes Two that stands out to me is that this game specifically was built from the ground up for a co-op. And there's just not a lot of experiences out there like that. So when I remember when I was playing, you know, at first, you know, you're kind of thinking, oh, like, oh, it's cute. Like, yeah, there's some really fun things here and some basic level, not basic level design, but, you know, it's it's cute. It's like, honey, I shrunk the kids sort of kind of whatever. But then there's these like really incredible gameplay twists and turns. And sometimes it becomes like a, I remember like, a, like an isometric RPG. I remember like there was that level that one point. Um, but no, I, I remember just playing it and really, really loving it. And, you know, you're talking about getting competitive, Steve. I think there's is it is it checkers or chess is in that game like you can play it at, it's it's part of like the level design it's it's like a side thing you could do i've never played in my life like honestly my husband's been playing for many years i beat him in the game and it takes two and i was like <laughs> i'm smart and you're not uh, it was all luck it was all luck uh, but no like that's what i remember from it takes two is it was just it's an incredible game i think personally just like really lives up to the hype of being an iconic cooperative experience because again it is built from the ground up for that and uh, there, there's some fun discourse going on about is it a kid's game? Because it does deal with the the theme of two parents who, if I, my memory serves me correctly, are thinking about filing for divorce. And they do have a child together. And that causes a lot of um, tension and actually plays into some of the gameplay that you see. And then there's that scene with Cutie the Elephant, which is just absolutely tragic and gave me some serious like trauma. That was Awful. Do you wow, remember that? Like game that yeah. just hits you with tra uh, like traumatic uh, scenes. Dude, okay, you'll go, right. Steve. Once you play it, you'll you'll see, you'll meet Cutie the Elephant, and then you'll see what I'm talking about, and you'll okay. be like, "Are you sure this is a kid's game?" <laughs> I definitely need to cry. Yeah, uh, that, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make, keep that in mind. Uh, Leo, do you have any stories <laughs> similar to that? And it takes two. <laughs> well, I just remember that what there's this one part where you it is it like. Design from the ground up for co-op is really the key because both characters need to act, take these plat platforming mechanics and work with them together. So one of you has like a plunger that's almost like a hook mm. shot and then there's a rope and then that and that needs to happen at the same time as the other person is doing another part in order to traverse over this big gap. And like, I just remember attempting to do that and being like, holy cow, like this is... Yeah. This is impressive to think and you can't there's no other way to do it. You have to do it with somebody else and talk through the process of it and really communicate because if not, you're not going to be able to do it. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I thought was really fun about that, because how often do you get a game like that, too? Usually mm -hmm. it's it's, you know, the sometimes that I have seen it. It's been so few and far between. Overcooked has a little bit of it where you really need to talk through what the mechanics are and what you need to do to progress. And that's pretty rare in, in games right now. I think uh, Hazelight's other game, A Way Out, is also on Game Pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, and that's the, too. yeah, yeah. And that's the other one I can think of. Of course, comes from the same studio, so it makes sense. That, again, built for co-op. And that was a really that was a whole other interesting experience as well that um, if we had more time, I'm sure we could talk about that one a lot, too. But, yeah, A Way Out is also a good one from that yeah. same studio. Joseph Ferris, what a guy. What yeah. a guy. <laughs> um, I've got one that I've been actually, like, I've been uh, uh, excited to be able to talk about. I mean, I, it's it's old school. It's like it's synonymous with Xbox and that I'm talking about Halo. Of course. Uh, and, mm. and of so, course. It, well, okay, so my brother and I, we've been kind of like, we were sort of close as kids, but not really. We, I mean, you know, sibling yeah. rivalry and all that. But we really kind of got a lot closer as adults because we were able to uh, play video games together. And um, last year, uh, my brother got an Xbox Series X, uh, and he decided like oh, that was the one the platform he wanted on because because specifically because of of Game Pass. And he and the one game that he kind of wanted to play with me was basically the Halo series. And uh, we we had like you know uh, like as our lives got super busy. I mean, he's got two boys and a family and a job, and and I've also got like my own work and, and stuff like that. So it was just it was hard for us to kind of like schedule the time to for us to be able to play it. But lately, actually, over the past like few a uh, few months, um, we've been really 
diving in deep into Halo when we actually just Ooh. the just this week we actually beat the the first Halo uh hey. Halo Combat Evolved uh together Hell yeah. and yeah, it, it's it made me think as I was like the last time I actually played this and completed the game was when I first played it on the original Xbox um mm -hmm. like 20 plus like 20 years ago and it was kind of really cool to be to kind of think okay the next time I got to play it and, and finish it was uh, was with my brother uh, 20 years later and uh uh, I, I like we're now we we were like okay let, let's just jump into Halo Two and so we just started Halo Two as well and uh, we've been kind of like really enjoying that and it was it's weird because we never whenever we would play games together it was always against each other mm -hmm. and my brother was just a much better gamer at, than than I was so like it, 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 we were growing up anytime we played video games I would die so quickly I was just I was more comfortable watching him play than me actually playing with him. And uh, it got so frustrating, even like as a teenagers into like er, like early twenties, where I just stopped playing with them all together because I was like, you just you just constantly beat me. I can't. I get frustrated. I can't do it. But once we discovered co op games and th specifically like Halo, it's just it's been so great to just kind of like okay, let's work together to try to be able to uh, to kind of you know keep the, like to be able to, to to defeat the covenant and uh, and and make sure that we like you know the halo doesn't get activated and being master chief together <laughs> so um, I mean I'm glad you bring that up I know you know we were kind of giving you oh of course halo but I don't think there's been a better series for co-op than halo especially in mm -hmm. my my relationship with my husband i can't tell you how many times we've played through those games together you know we like to have these halo marathons where we do exactly what you're doing where you just go through all the games especially leading up to a new halo game right it's just so yeah. fun to do that and go in there i remember this one time we were in the middle of a halo marathon but we were on a we we're going on a weekend getaway and i think it was like a six hour drive so we packed up like our 48 inch tv or whatever it was threw in the back of our car and like drove out to the middle of bump nowhere and we brought our xbox and we played halo in our hotel room and it was just like the coolest we ordered room service and we had drinks and i mean when i tell you like and we had this beautiful backdrop of eastern washington like behind the tv it was the coolest thing and i'll never forget that so like i I'm, i am very glad that you you brought up halo it is just so i have so many years of memories playing that with people it's the best yeah i love that love yeah that. Leah, I, I assume you have some, you know, some connection with Halo to a certain degree. I mean, it's Xbox podcast, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But like when I started getting into games, I only really got into Xbox when we started Girls on Games, um, mm. honestly. So like I had really no, like I knew of Halo and I played it at friend's house and all that kind of stuff, but I'd never really gotten to play through it myself. But then when the Master Chief Collection came out, that's when I really got into it and played through with a friend who adores the game. Um, and I was like, I need to know the lore because I love yeah. lore and games. So, so yeah, we played through uh, all of them and it, it was a blast. And it's just, it's funny now that I understand, you know, the memes <laughs> and, <laughs> and all of that and, and how driving a warthog is absolutely terrifying. Oh, um, once again, can't oh, drive it's cars bad. and games. Oh, it's still bad. Like can't, I can't drive cars and games. We finished <laughs> up that mission and the last, like everyone knows, like the last mission is basically you're just driving through a warthog. Like you got like six oh, minutes yeah. to escape. Yeah. Yep. 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 My, my brother was basically, he was like, I can't turn left. I can't turn left. I'm like, it's because it's a thumbstick. You got to push forward too. And it's just, it was frustrating. You know what it, though? Yeah. It is yeah. frustrating, but I kind of hope it never gets fixed or patched. It's just part of that silly ass charm of true, that game. True. You know? Yeah, I love that. I always love trying to fit the warthogs into, this is something we'll always do when we play, trying to fit the warthogs or maybe like the banshees into um, the doorways of like yeah. the complexes. Because mm -hmm. you can do it if you punch them enough. You can yep. squeeze them in there and they'll pop in and then you have it. It is just so much. I love that game. <laughs> oh, so much so fun. Good. It's, yeah. a, it's it's equally uh, frustrating, but it's like it's fun oh, yeah. just to kind of like play around and mess with it for yeah. sure. Um, and just having so. the ability to flip back and forth between the old graphics and the new, and you were oh, like, "Oh my god, we I, loved this back in the day. We thought this was the pinnacle of it's gaming. It's never gonna get better than this." <laughs> I was like, never "I don't." Better. I don't know what kind of like voodoo engineering that they were able to do where it's like instantly you could switch between old yeah. and, and, and new graphics. And I'm like, how do they do this? <laughs> yeah. like, it's so it's so seamless and it's so good. Like we, there were a few times where my brother and I would just be like, oh, look at this. Like in the old graphic, he's like, oh, oh God. <laughs> this is what yeah. we used to like think was good, like cutting edge. <laughs> the flood in the old graphics. I was like, oh, they're yeah. still creepy. Yeah, they the still look like insects. I don't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, it even it even loads the old audio too, and it's like yeah. when you switch between the two it's just so like good. oh my god like how can anyone play the old way anymore yeah. uh, totally. but yeah, but yeah. 
So uh, another game actually that you kind of uh, had brought up before, and this is something I don't know if I could be able to ever touch uh, just because of how difficult it could be. But you mentioned Wolong Fa uh, Fallen Dynasty. I did <laughs> Tell mention Tell me how is this a good co-op game? Yeah, how is it co-op? I didn't even know it was co-op. Yeah, let me like wrap my head around Wolong. So yeah, it's, uh, gosh, this game came out, was it last year? Was it this year? It was this year. I think gosh, it was, it was yeah, this year. This year. Oh, yeah, gosh. yeah, yeah. Um, Can you believe that? You know, and you know, like, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, like, I'm, my brain is really bad at remembering details, but this is what I do remember about Wolong, because we finished it from beginning to end. We did all of the side stuff. We had a really great time with it. And it is that Souls-like esque combat that um you know it's very difficult like you know it's meant to be difficult but it's not impossible and that's because of the way the game is set up in the sense that you know it, you can make the game essentially as easy as you want it to be or as hard as you want it to be now that said that first boss i don't know if y'all remember the discourse mm -hmm. around it mm -hmm. that took me i think three hours and I think it took my husband three hours, and then we both finished the boss at the same time. And then it's only then that you can play together with somebody, but you have oh. to get past that first boss. And I don't know. I think they made it easier because I was playing a review copy, so it was before any patches came in or anything. And it was brutal. But what's really <laughs> great about this is that you can play the entire game with someone, and that person can revive you if you fall, or you can revive them if they fall. You know, you share orbs, you share loot, you share all of the things, and it is just very co-op friendly. Um, I know everyone has talked about oh the Elden Ring co-op is so complicated and weird and like I agree I don't like that system for cooperative play I wish going forward that maybe FromSoft will take some inspiration of how Wo Long did their co-op mm. because you could just you know yeah you could just hop in and just play with someone and there's really no barriers there are some interesting gameplay mechanics that can get really really complicated and when I explained it on what's good games it took me like literally an hour so I, I won't do that here <laughs> but um you know it's really fun in the sense that yeah you have these really cool worlds like combat i love the combat um you definitely have to be quick with the fingers but and then the one of the downsides of it was um the inventory management there's just so much and some people i think really love that in case if you're into like min maxing right but uh for me it was just like a little too overwhelming but it was something i was able to look past and just enjoy the experience of it all because there's just not a lot of games that are cooperative like Wolong, long you know where you have that really fast-paced combat and that difficulty and uh the fact that they incorporated the, the all of the cooperative features into it is just really really cool and it's really fun so yeah if you haven't played it i would definitely recommend you do the story is kind of cuckoo bananas but that's fine you're just playing for the gameplay anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it makes yeah. sense why i didn't know because i could not make it through that past that boss and yeah, i just said yeah. well i guess i just am not good at games time for the next one no it was hard and I, listen like i don't i'm usually really bad at those sorts of games too and it was just you have to just memorize the patterns and that's uh. what it's all about is the yeah there's certain bosses that maybe took us like five or six times each and then other ones by the end you know because we knew how to make it easier for ourselves we were able to breeze mm -hmm. right through it but there are those difficulty spikes uh which are surprising fun but oh boy if you're not expecting them oh Man, but yeah, the first boss. Is, I wish they would just give you an option to skip it. That would be the best. But, yeah, that'd, yeah. Be, that'd be great. I mean, you know, my yeah. disability can only handle so much. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I just I don't know if I'll be able to enjoy the co-op goodness that it, that can be uh, Wolong Final Dynasty. But uh, oh well, uh, I may yeah, I may check it out. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> um, but also, Leah, you because I know you're like the biggest uh, uh, Minecraft uh, fan. I know uh, mm -hmm. what just like about the the co-op experience um, in oh, pretty much all like the the minecraft games that's it my all all of the minecraft games have like they're designed to play single player they're designed to play multiplayer you have your world have people jump in i i loved when we did minecraft legends you and i had the best time playing together like that was my favorite yeah. part of it was you and i playing together and being strategic about our base defending and killing off those piglins and everything I mean, uh, the uh, Minecraft Dungeons is definitely designed, you know, you can play it single player, play it multiplayer. It's tons of fun to play multiplayer. And then, and then, yeah, Minecraft itself, the traditional, you know, like have your server, get someone to join your, your realm, whatever you want to do, right? Like it's just, they've built it for that. And they've even like people build their own games inside Minecraft to play with others. Like it's just fascinating. So, so yeah, Mojang is like, crafted a beast there in order to have people play together of all ages. So that's uh, just Minecraft. Minecraft is just magical. I love it. <laughs>
Britta, are you going to introduce your... about Minecraft? <laughs> yeah. Britta, are you going to introduce uh, your little one to Minecraft? Uh, I have to wrap my enough? head around Minecraft to you before I can do that. And I say that because I've tried to get... And I've played the dungeons. I've played Legends. And I always had a mm -hmm. really good time with it. But the actual game of Minecraft itself, I don't know if I'm just old. But all I end up doing is I just like carve a hole to the bottom of the level. And now I'm in lava. And I'm like, what has happened? How am I here? <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure what's going to end up happening is he'll play it. He'll master it. He'll teach it to me. I'm like, mm. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, Brent, you have your, like a, a choice here that uh, I've actually been in interested to, to play because it came out relatively recently. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about the co-op experience in Sniper Elite 5? So what I love about Sniper Elite 5 is that it's a third-person tactical stealth shooter, and it's not face tank shotgun shooter. And that was a really hard lesson for me because I am someone who loves a face tank and use shotguns because it's like spray and pray and it's the best. Like spray all the pellets and hope for the best. But I love this game because it challenged me to be to to be a sniper because my husband Jason always plays the sniper classes. He likes to take the slow, steady, accurate shots when it comes to things. And like I said, I'm the spray and pray. So what's really cool about this game is that you have these beautiful open areas and I think they use, I can never say this word right photogrammetry i think i said that right okay. this time i think i got it, I think it so sounds about right yeah i think it's about right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. these locations that you get to play in are just absolutely gorgeous and stunning and it takes place i think in the 1940s i wrote down here like what the actual like thing is but okay in 1944 where you're, you're bringing bringing down the nazis in france so it's, mm. it's for a good it's for a good cause um and so yeah you are you you're you're this carl guy but if you're playing with somebody else it's essentially i think I don't know if it's just a copy of Carl or if it's an actual another character that's in the story, but you can do this realistic, realistic shooter with another person with really great co-op. So, for example, you know, Jason's the the sniper guru and I'm not be like, OK, so he's like, this is what we're going to do. You're going to go up to that hill over there and we're going to scout these folks and then we're going to count to three and then we're going to take them out and then we're going to be stealthy and then we're going to take these guys down without them noticing us. And then we're going to go in here and look for this lit intel and then we're going to go over here and we're going to get into a big old like spray and pray match because there's so many guys. It was just really fun in the sense that you don't I feel like you don't often get a lot Lot of these ergo air quotes again realistic sh first person shooter games uh mm -hmm. where they're co-op you know okay. where you, okay. they're they're mission based and mm -hmm. It was just really well done. There's always something fun to do. And it's just like a really gorgeous game. And that just sounds like a weird thing to cons to consistently praise for a shooting game. But it's like, man, like I would just love running around in the fields while he's out, you know, destroying Nazis. I'm like, look at this pretty flower. It's really cool. Um, But no, it, it was a lot of fun. And if you haven't played this with somebody i would highly suggest you back in the day i think they had maybe eight or nine missions but i know there's been a lot of post-launch support um and there's skill trees so you can buff your character you know you can add more health you can increase your ammo capacity uh it's just like it was just a really really fun game to play and it's a lot of content i think if you do everything you're looking at like 30 to 40 hours of stuff to do wow okay yeah yeah right. i mean like it, it's just i always sing the praises of sniper elite 5 because it's just something fun and different. You know? I love that. I love that. I love those kind of like the little gems. Is that game first person or is it third person? I can't remember I think anymore. it's technically third person, but when you get into sniping, mode, I think it's like first yeah. person. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. But no, absolutely. Like, it's really fun just to play with someone else because, again, you have these big sandboxes and you kind of like decide how you want to do it. There's yeah. side missions. There's intel you can collect. There's, um, si yeah, it's just, it's really good. Yeah. Very cool. Really good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that is pretty much our our, our main list of uh, co-op games. Uh, and we we do have a segment that, that, that Leah, I definitely am very curious about, is about the sort of this co-op sort of simulation, like weird and wacky simulation games. But before we get into that, we do have to say uh, goodbye to our dear friend, Brittany Brombacher. We want to thank you so very much for joining us on the, on the podcast today. Um, where can people be able to find you and follow you and all the, the amazing stuff that you do? Aw, you can find me on Twitter at Blonde Nerd, or you can listen to the podcast called What's Good Games, released every Friday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific, and you can find us on Twitter, What's Good underscore games, YouTube.com slash What's Good Games, all of the games, except for we are not what Leah's podcast is, which I I just realized that it's kind of girls on games. I girls love on it. Games. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's such a good, <laughs> it's a good title. Anyway, yeah, What's Thank Good you. Games podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you guys for having me. This was really fun. Of course. Thank you so very much. Amazing. Thank you. Bye. All right. Once again, thanks, Brittany, for joining us. We really appreciate it. But I wanted, I've been curious about this because Lee, you put this into our, like, into our show doc. And I'm, I'm like, 
I like a good simulation game. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like I've been I've been obsessed with Power Wash Simulator. Like that one's just kind of like one I've been really diving into. Um, but you've got like a bunch of the, uh, the games in here that are also co-op playable. Um, but they're like weird and wacky simulation games. So why don't you can take us through the, uh, your list of uh, additional uh, co-op games for uh, for our plus ones? Yeah, and this is like I'm you. These are most part single player games, but I like to play them with my husband, where okay. we pass the controller back and forth, and we do it that way mostly. Like I kind of look at it as like. We have, if we're doing power washing simulator, we have a power washing simulator uh, company together, you know, that kind of thing. Mm, or okay. car mechanic simulator. We have this together, right? So, um, yeah, it's just because these games are more about the process and, you know, the, the, they're, they're not necessarily like learn the skills and, you know, have to get better with the timing or anything like that. It's really about like, uh, uh, the mechanics of it all when it comes to what do you do first? What's the best way to make your money? And that's why I feel like they work really well as co-op games, even though they're not traditionally made like that. And they're oftentimes super soothing to play. Mm, and I know okay. like power washing simulator, like there's something about it. Cleaning dirt off stuff oh my God. is just so soothing. Like so I satisfying. fell down that rabbit hole on TikTok. You know, people cleaning rugs or you, you know, that oh kind of my stuff. God, where you're yes. just like, I, it's so I, yes. like, <laughs> Oh, Yes. Oh, I, I so dove down that rabbit hole. And I was just like, <laughs> I just, I just need to see how, like the different, like, like what's the, the the carpet gonna look like now compared to what it was when it first. Oh yeah. man, it was so good. Yeah. Oh, what? So I don't like, know something about it. <laughs> is it something power washing simulator? gives me the same vibe and i remember as a kid you know my dad or maybe not more like a teenager um being home in newfoundland and dad would break out the power washer and you'd clean off the vinyl and on the side of the wall and it would just be so soothing and you get so much fun to do in real life it's not really fun to do in real life but it's like fun yeah it's fun about doing it in like in a game there's also a smidge of danger too because oh, that's right. power yeah. washer, like power washing, the, the you, projection of the water is so yourself. aggressive. You can, burn, yeah, you could totally rip the skin off. So you yeah. have to be careful. When you play the game, you don't have to worry about that. Nope, not at <laughs> all. <laughs> and I love it too because it's like, it like, I love, uh, it's now a tangent into how much we love Power Wash Simulator, but I love yeah. like the weird and wacky like things you can do in it. Like I remember like I was cleaning off the Mars rover. Um, yeah. Like you get one of the expansions, you can be able to like, two of the expansions, like you could uh, clean out uh, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants' house and yeah. the Tomb Raider mansion, which I'm yep. like, I've been so intimidated to, to jump into that one because I'm like, oh my God, that's such such a giant job it's gonna take it's me huge. days it's huge to do. oh yeah well even there was like a shoe house that i cleaned yes up. i just finished that one it was yeah the yeah. shoe house yeah 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 uh and <laughs> it like, gave you like scaffolding to kind of like yeah. like to get, do up from the top up with to the it top. as well yeah, yeah. so, so like, how, I, do you, how do you how do you play this co-op with uh with your husband so we essentially just sit on the couch and chill out and one of us will play for a bit and the other person will kind of like Say like, ooh, do this, do that, whatever. Or maybe someone's flipping on their phone at the same time. And then we'll pass it back. When we were doing Car Mechanic Simulator, because I was so unknowledgeable about cars and trying to figure it out, Mike was like a boon because he he knew what all these parts were so i'm like okay this is great so he was coaching me through a lot of the the bits and pieces right and then i would ask him like what's this what's that and then the thing i would accidentally like not empty the oil and and get, get penalized for it and have get paid had to pay for cleanup and mike's like <laughs> yeah you need to empty the oil first i'm like uh how do you do that <laughs> <laughs> so like so like we just kind of like learn through the process and pass it back and forth and if one person maybe someone's cooking dinner and one person's playing and then someone else is cleaning up and the other person's playing like that's how we do it house flipper is another oh, yeah. one that's kind of like that too where it's it's fun because it's almost like we're we're decorating our condo again and now mind oh. you in toronto it's so expensive to like own a house like 
ridiculously expensive. And we used to be condo owners in Montreal and we're not here in Toronto because it's so bloody expensive. Uh-huh. And also it's, it's, you know, like for millennials, it's going to be hard to get houses, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm like, now I'm just living the life I want to live. I want to be that reno person. I want to be doing these kinds of stuff. And especially since the new like house slipper two is coming out sometime soon, you know, like having rip knocking down a wall and rebuilding <laughs> it and, and, painting and all this kind of stuff. Like I love doing that kind of stuff. I like just like making things with my hands. So being able to do that in game is, is tons of fun. And another good one too, though, not on game pass, but on Xbox, but I feel like it may come and it may have been on there before, but when I got it, it it wasn't on game pass, um, is lawn mowing simulator, similar Ah, to power wash simulator. There's something very satisfactory about, making the lawn super clean and super neat, especially if you're doing like the drive on lawn mowers. Yes, and like yes. At, when I was, when I was younger, that was my job in the house. Cause everybody else in my house was like, See, I never had grass. that job. I never I, got to me. use it. Always I, me. <laughs> I never got to use a lawnmower. I always, I always had to rake uh, afterwards, like rake the like the grass clippings because oh, yeah. it was. Yeah, no. My my dad was the only one who could use it, and also then my my brother was the only one who could be able to to mow the lawn. I was not allowed to touch it at all, and I was kind of mad about that. I was like, I want to know what it's like to mow a lawn. Well, there's <laughs> so another thing the that's kind of dangerous, right? Like yeah. those blades are legit. So, sure. uh, but yeah, there is something very satisfying about doing it and soothing and especially when you start getting the upgrades where you can do like the different patterns like you notice in like some like the dark grass dark grass it's all about and the lines in it it's all about how it's being mowed um yeah i i love that so yeah it's something that mike and i really like doing together because we don't necessarily like playing we like playing cooperatively rather than competitively Gotcha. And these games too have like a, uh, for the most part, low bench uh, barrier to entry because you don't need to be super skillful in playing a game, which means you can lay it down for a while and pick it up like a month or so later and still know what to do. You know, relearn the controls real quick. Right. And like power washing simulator. I pick that up every so often. Where I'm just like, I want to play something soothing, but I don't have the brain power after a full day of work to really like get into the weeds of something. Power washing simulator is the perfect solution for that. So yeah, okay. that's how okay. we do it. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. I love a good, like, you know, like some fun, like not necessarily traditionally co-op, but you know, some games you can basically, you know, play with your partner or just, you know, mm-hmm. play with a loved one. I, I love, I, I, oh man, I love games. Games are cool, man. They are. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Well, that's going to end our, this week's episode or this week, this episode of, of the Xbox passport. Um, but before we do, uh, let's, let's, let's do our social. So Leah, where can people be able to find you online? So I'm Leah Jewer on most social media platforms. Um, if you want to check out Girls on Games Pack, pass, uh, oh my God, I was going to say Passport, but that doesn't make sense. Girls on Games Podcast. podcast. <laughs> That's what it's called, right? Oh yeah. my God, it's been a long day. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, Girls on Games Podcast is available where all great podcasts are found. We're uh, the Girls on Games Passport on Facebook and X. <laughs> oh, not Twitter. X. Well, X. Not, no, God. Okay. It's still Twitter. Just, it's still going to be just, Twitter. <laughs> just the uh, girls on games on uh, Instagram and threads. Oh my goodness. There's so many social media channels. I know. Now. I know. I'm the same yeah. way too. So I, it's I, like... wild. It's wild. But yeah, so, girls on games.ca for everything else. But yeah, how about you, Steve? Where can people find you? So basically, actually, I've been able to lock down uh, at Steve Saylor on on Twitter slash X, on yeah. Threads, on uh, on Instagram, Good also on Blue Scri- also on Blue Sky, ah. uh, and uh, and also on YouTube here as well. Like I'm, I'm a YouTube channel. The only ones I'm not basically Steve Saylor is I'm Blind Gamer Steve on Twitch and on uh, TikTok. So uh. that's the only two I can't feel to switch over yet. Although I might switch over to t- the, the, the on Twitch, but TikTok is a whole other thing in and of itself, but whatever. Uh, so you can be able to find me all there. Uh, and also make sure to be able to uh, subscribe to this podcast where all podcasts are, including obviously my YouTube channel, at Steve Saylor, like I said, for the video version of the podcast. If you liked what you heard, please give us a rating on your platform of choice and a review. We love to read your thoughts. Also, you know, let us know on socials as well uh, or on YouTube or on any podcast platform. Um, and let us know what is your favorite Game Pass game. Uh, we'd love to be able to check it out 
out for the show and like definitely send us your, your suggestions we love finding new game pass games that we may not have been able to sort of check out yet or just kind of those hidden gems uh, on xbox game pass uh and lastly share the show with your friends or your gaming party uh or to your plus ones uh that you play with in order to be able to help spread the word about the show uh, we'll be back again with another episode in august uh so stay tuned for that make sure you subscribe and and, and check that out when it, when it happens and we'll you know taking a bit of a summer break like we said at the beginning of the show uh so you know enjoy your summer play some games get out but also get outside touch grass as it were uh thanks so much for listening and or watching until next time when everybody plays we all win bye bye <laughs>